I used to look out my window and wish things were different. I would stare at the trees waving in the wind and the cars as they drove by. I had a whole world outside that I could never see. My family and I weren't very warm with each other. I wish they loved me more. I felt very alone. I walked down the street. It was one of the rare occasions I was let out. I saw abandoned houses and buildings that had a gray tint and except for me, as far as I could tell, it was abandoned. The park was dirty and I was cleaning it. It was all broken and graffitied. I had, I had hope for it. It was looking better than before. I fixed up the benches and I was planting new flowers. I finished up a coat of paint I was doing on the statue and decided to stop by a store nearby to get some food. I realized I had no money, so I walked home. I walked through the tattered clotheslines and the messy sidewalks. I walked up to my house. It, it was too nice for our neighborhood, I thought. I walked up to the front porch and in the front door, I saw my mom and dad talking about their business, but they didn't notice me. They owned an interior design company. It was very interesting work, but they were, too, they were so busy. They said when I turned 17, they would let me in the business. We were a very business-oriented family, and it made me feel lonely sometimes. The next day, I went back to a park and I saw someone on the bench. She was a young girl, younger than me at least. I walked up to her and she smiled. Hi. I asked her why she was here and she told me about how she liked coming to look at the trees and flowers. I told her I was the one who planted the flowers and fixed the benches. I told her about how I had been coming to this park for years and how I thought no one else cared about it. I took out my tools and got to work. The girl asked if she could help and I needed it, so I said okay. We worked tirelessly for hours and we had lots of fun. We planted flowers, repainted the jungle gym, and refurnished the picnic tables. At the end, we were both covered in dirt and paint. So she said goodbye and we headed home to get washed up. When I got home, my parents asked why I was so dirty. I had not told them about the park yet. I was so scared they would not see the potential I saw. So I made up some lie about falling in the dirt, then sitting on a bench with wet paint and went up to my room. As I showered, I thought about the ways to explain why I was going to a park so often and decided to keep the secret. I headed off to bed with racing thoughts. I didn't get much sleep that night. The next few weeks were so boring. It seemed to rain nonstop so I couldn't go to the park. I had nothing to do. My parents did have money, but they never bothered to buy me a TV to watch or many toys to play with. I watched the wa water drops on my window as most kids did on long car rides. I got bored very quickly from that and had no idea what to do next. I could talk to my parents, but they were probably busy as always. I didn't want to bother them. I decided to put on some rain clothes and sneak out. I strategically placed my pillow so it would look as if I was sleeping. I went on a midnight adventure and walked along many paths, and I came across one that I had never seen before. It was a long and winding dirt road with many forks. I had not seen anyone else go down this road, much less look at it. I walked the path for many hours, stopping for every stopping for a break every two. I saw a big oak, old oak trees covered with Spanish moss and started to see some light up in the distance. I walked toward it and I heard voices saying, hey, she's up, she's up, she's waking up. I opened my eyes and I saw my mom and dad. When I asked what happened, my parents said I had been asleep. I had been in a coma for many years. They found me passed out in the bathroom and took me to the hospital and I never woke up. I didn't know what to think. As far as I had remembered, I had been renovating the park and, walk park and walking down the road. How could I have been in the hospital for that long? I asked the nurses when I could leave and they told me I needed to take a few tests but I could go home in a few hours. I took a nap and by the time I awoke, I was ready to go home. I asked if we could stop by the park near our home on the way there. My parents wanted to go straight home, but they agreed. When we got there, I saw a perfectly new park with renovations I had made. I wondered how I made them if I was sick and asleep. I walked around and I saw a group of people. I asked them about the park and they said they just finished a big community project and they'd done all of this. I was amazed. It made me wonder if everything I remembered was just my imagination. I didn't know what to think. I asked to go home because I needed to do some thinking. I got to my house that looked nothing like I remembered and I walked in to find my room. I knew that it was my room right when I saw it. All of the memories came back and the old ones faded from my mind. I explored my house and I saw the little girl I had seen at the park. I realized she looked a lot like me. She ran up to me and said, I'm so happy to see you. She gave me a big hug. I was so frozen in shock I couldn't move. My mom said, hug your sister, she missed you. I gave her a big hug and before I knew it, she was dragging me off to play dolls. We played until dinner. I ate and then headed off to bed. I woke up the next morning. My mom told me to get ready since we were going to the park. I pulled on some, I pulled on some clothes. We all got in the car. She 
pulled up and my mom said for me and my sister to go play together. It had just rained, but it was a beautiful sunny day. I saw orange sunlight shining through the trees and heard squirrels rustling in the trees. I saw other kids laughing and playing. This was the park I remembered, but I had always visited in the middle of the night. I could feel the sun shining on my face. I was astonished. I had never felt this happy before. This was the first moment in a long time I felt as if I belonged in the world. I would never forget this day. Well, a lot of things bother me, like the negative things people say, or having to do my chores, but the thing that bothers me the most is not being able to change. I'm annoying, disruptive, loud, but there's a positive side to it. If people can hear me, I can get my point across. If someone might think it's disruptive, they might think that's annoying. If I become loud, I can change my tone. That's how I can change the way they look at me. Sometimes I'm not so annoying, loud, or disruptive, like the time I bought chocolate for my whole class to pay back for the things I did that year. Or when I get no gifts for my birthday, it was okay because my friends were enough. Maybe I don't need change, but some people are different and need change, like the people who steal things or people who lie about the things they do. People who bully others for fun or people who do not believe in themselves or who doubt themselves because people matter and I care for them. I want them to change how they look at themselves or others to make them feel inspired by the things they do or what they do. It's time to change, anyone can change. Peanut woke up on a hospital bed. He wondered if he was hurt or not, but he couldn't remember anything. A red figure was standing above him. He focused on trying to make it out. It turned out to be a red bean with legs and a blue oval at the top. What the, he wondered. He felt warmer than usual. He looked at himself, only to find that he was a green version of the red creature. Good, you're finally awake, a voice said from somewhere in the room. He looked around, and the red thing was looking at him. Ah, he yelled. What's up, did something happen? It's, it said. Peanut now knew that the red thing was a person in a suit. You hit your head really hard. A door slammed right as you were running through head first. It spoke once more. Peanut was surprised. He was always careful, so why was he running head first into a door? Upon further inspection, he realized that the door was metal and not a standard door. The door was two metal blocks that slammed open and shut. The blocks were in the walls and extended when they needed to. Someone was trying to hurt him. He followed the person in the red suit outside, where the ground was purple and rocky. It was now chilly and snow was slowly covering the landscape. As I glanced out at the cheese dipping sauce, I realized that there was a bear heading toward me. I tried to run, but it was too fast. I decided I'd have to turn back and fight it. I tried to bite its arm off, but it tried to bite mine. So I just went for its head. After the bear attack, I had to run to the Motherlands Market. When I got there, I bought a cheese grinder for self-defense. It was time to go to the mines and look for a rare cheese. I had reached the mozzarella when suddenly, a giant cheese spider started to attack me and some of the other cheese miners. I pulled out my cheese grinder and sliced off two of its arms, then ground off its head. I was praised for my bravery by some of the miners, but then a strange miner whom I saved came up and handed me a wrapped up cheese. He told me it would go for a lot. I opened it and it was American cheese, the rarest cheese in Russia. I had to brawl almost all the miners in the cave before I got out. I went straight to the market and sold it. The American cheese was too dangerous to sell to someone random and there was a chance that they would try to scam me. <clears throat> so I hired two people, Ricky and Bobby, who knew how to grow the rare cheese, but they needed some of it to grow. After a month, they proved that they could grow it and we were on the team. I came up with a plan that we could sell it to the royal family because they were known for collecting rare cheese. If we did, they'd be able to grant us protection when transporting rare cheese, since it was illegal to have too much of a rare cheese. We went to the mansion and showed the proof that we had what they wanted and prepared to trade the next day. While we were leaving, I heard a bang behind me. Bobby and Ricky realized that someone had sold us out and the family looked at us, thinking we were selling them out. They had called the RSP, Russian Secret Protectors. Then the Russian police jumped out and we were forced in the middle of a shootout over some cheese. 
the end.